Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and I want to welcome you to my daily teachings uh, here at our blog potipadre.com, uh, also on YouTube. Uh, today we are in Friday of the second week of Lent and I have entitled today's teaching Dealing with the Green-Eyed Monster. The Green-Eyed Monster is uh, another way of saying dealing with jealousy. So we are going to look at our text which is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 3 to 4. You can also have a look at um, my teaching on YouTube as well as on my blog based on the Gospel of Matthew. If you go to uh, the description box of today's uh, teaching on YouTube, you'll find it. Also those who get my daily um, teachings via WhatsApp, I have given you the links. Now let's go straight to Genesis. Now, when you read this text, you realize that in just these two lines, in these two verses of, of scripture, uh, it strikes at our very heart. Now, this is not some plot that has to be unraveled over a two-hour murder mystery on Netflix. Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is the matter of hearts, not one, but several hearts that we are looking at. And clearly, we are told that Jacob's heart loved and in the same breath, we are told that the hearts of Joseph's brothers were filled with hate. The father's heart was filled with love. The brother's hearts were filled with hate. The fact that Joseph's brothers hate Joseph is repeated in verses 5. It is repeated in verses 8. So we are dealing with people, with brothers, who really, really hate Joseph. It's repeated thrice, that word hate is repeated thrice uh, in a couple of verses. So straight away we need to address the fact that jealousy is deadly. Now, as I said in the title, we call it the green-eyed monster, the green-eyed monster. Let's understand jealousy. Jealousy is the emotion we feel when we feel fearful of losing someone or a relationship that is very important to us. Now, maybe we start to fear a relationship is becoming less sacred in the other person's eyes. Maybe we fear that someone else is going to take away a friendship, a relationship, a connection that I may have with someone else and I then get jealous. Now, um, I would not want you to get confused, don't confuse jealousy with envy. I think many people make that mistake. Many also advocate that jealousy and envy, they are the two sides of the same coin. Um, let me put it this way to you, what is envy? Envy or covetousness, yeah, I, I desire something that somebody else has, covetousness. Envy or covetousness is when you want what someone else has. But jealousy is when you're worried someone's trying to take someone that you have. Yeah? One deals with humans, the other deals with objects. Now, in any case, it's no fun to feel envy or to feel jealous because both of these make you as a person feel inadequate. It doesn't leave you with a great feeling at all. It makes you feel small, it makes you feel out of place, it makes you feel out of sorts and it just throws you into a turmoil. So please don't be, don't think that these are great attributes to have, to be jealous or to be envious. Now coming to Genesis and to the narrative of today, the story of Joseph and his brothers in Genesis 37 is a story of jealousy and also uh, the story of sibling rivalry. You know, uh, the Joseph story has very clear echoes when you read the story of Joseph and his brothers and the jealousy that they had, it has very clear echoes to another story that is also in the book of Genesis, the story of Cain and Abel, which we also find in the same book. So when we look at the story of Joseph and his brothers, there is discord, there is unhappiness, there is division in Jacob's house. Now it is very typical sibling behavior to think that a parent likes one child better than another. I hear this so often, people tell me this, uh, mothers sometimes cry, parents cry, saying, how can my children think 
that you know I love one more than the other but there's a perception very often among siblings that the parent likes one child over the other but in in this case Jacob proves his preference really or rather he makes his preference quite evident that he did love Joseph more by giving him a gift um, he gives him a, a coat with long sleeves there is no reference to a coat of many colors this is this I think has come down because of the translation from uh, one of the um, the King James version which translated the word as a coat of many colors but that's not true and then unfortunately Catholics you know just get influenced by anything so it's Jacob made his preference very clear for Joseph by giving him a coat with long sleeves look at your Bible and you'll see that now while the brothers see only their father's favoritism unfortunately Joseph adds fuel to the fire with his youthful boasting and careful sometimes you know when you receive a gift where you know you've received a gift from a significant other that many other people are vying to get his or her attention and then you get it uh, it's better to keep your mouth shut and under the under the radar because it triggers off a lot of hate among other people it triggers a lot of jealousy so don't go around boasting uh, of something that you received uh, even even if you deserve it yeah you need to be careful anyway coming down to our Genesis narrative Joseph's brothers uh, and their jealousy and hatred of Joseph it grows until they feel that they must get rid of Joseph you know if you read Genesis ch chapter 37 verse 23 and 24 it says they took him they took Joseph and they cast him into a pit and then they sell Joseph into slavery and then they trick their father into believing believing that Joseph was killed by an animal his brothers seem glad to finally get rid of their little brother their hate consumed their lives now think of this if Joseph's brothers had loved and appreciated Joseph instead of focusing on their hate and their jealousy I think those brothers would have been much happier but they chose to be unhappy they chose hatred they chose jealousy they chose murder they chose all of the above because they could not deal with their jealousy so while most of us are naturally hardwired with jealousy it does not have to define us you know you'll say oh well it's a human trait we are naturally hardwired towards doing these things yes I agree but it doesn't have to define who you are it doesn't have to make you it's not an option that you should choose so here's a very practical tip I want to give you pay attention to the self-talk about how you feel about others especially those you think make you insecure because people make us insecure or rather we feel insecure we think oh they are so talented I'm not so talented and then you start talking to yourself about them that self-talk is extremely dangerous it's hard to talk about feelings of jealousy but find someone and when you are feeling jealous go to someone um, and talk about it because it may make you seem petty but talk about it with people who tr you trust and say you know I'm feeling this sense of insecurity this sense of jealousy I know it makes me feel like I'm a silly person but I want help to deal with it before it snowballs into something that destroys my entire family look at the uh, rivalry sometimes in a family that destroys one another so remember this and I want to say this very clearly and remember this jealousy snatches love away it's it snatches love away you can't be jealous of someone and still in love with them jealousy always opens a new door to hate that's the job of jealousy now finally um, in this text of today you'll also see the story of a family feud yeah brothers fighting with each other I don't think anybody has an easy family families by nature are difficult to hold together because different people are wired differently 
it is very rare, it's a very rare family where there is not an estrangement of some kind or the other. Jacob's family story offers us in the season of Lent an opportunity to speak of estrangement, estrangement and also to speak to one another of the consequences of our rash acts and actions within a family. You may not feel um, inclined right now to talk to somebody in your family, but maybe it's a good time to reflect on what part you had in bringing about um, or in, in aggravating the situation within the family. I'm thinking of a person who told me, he said, Father, every time my sister picks up the phone and calls me, we know it's a fight. Yeah? He says, no matter how calm we are, we know it's a fight. And I said, but do you say something that aggravates? He says, well, do you want me to be quiet? I said, there you go. Yeah? Uh, you don't have to be a doormat, but careful how you pick your words. It's, it's, you know, when you love someone, you're able to communicate the truth to them in a kinder or a nicer manner. And I'm not saying this is easy. I know that some of you have to do, deal with siblings that are unreasonable, but we have to try anyway. Now, the story of today's narrative therefore also lets us see all the characters and their involvement in this drama. It also helps us to evaluate therefore the choices that you and I have at hand in dealing with family crisis. I pray that the season of Lent may bring healing to you and to your family. Thank you for joining me once again. I do hope you liked this teaching. Leave your comments if you did. Uh, also hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you need to do that right away. Thank you, God bless you, and to all of you who continue to share a meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, with our 12 children in the home. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. I must tell you that one of our boys, uh, his name is Kisan, who came to us some time ago, um, through the government appointed CWC, the organization that cares for child and women commission through them. They have found a permanent home for Kisan to be adopted. Uh, we are losing a child, but there are three more uh, we see that might potentially come to our home. But this is what we do. Uh, we bring joy into people's lives through your charity and through your kindness. And I want to say straight away here, that if it wasn't for Lenny and Nadia and the kind of people they are, a Catholic couple devoting their lives entirely to changing children's lives, uh, I wish you would visit this home and see for yourself. You will be beyond moved to see the way our children live in that home. So thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for believing in the work that we do. Keep well, everybody. I'll see you again tomorrow at 9 o'clock.